Hi everybody, how you all doing? Sean here from Lines in Wax. You may have recently noticed I've just dropped a massive 70 minute video on Cradle of Filth's entire discography uh, and it's just, a, it's just a big run through of all of that. So this little video here is a companion piece as it were, um, because you know these these video these ranking videos are quite common on YouTube, and I like to get involved. And of course, not everyone's got time to watch a seventy-minute video uh, on a band. So yeah, if you're really into Cradle of Filth, by all means, go check out my long, in-depth, complete discography retrospective. Otherwise, keep it right here because I've got all Cradle of Filth's um, studio albums uh, and an EP technically, <laughs> thrown in and ranked um, from worst to best because Cradle of Filth one of my all-time favourite bands. They've had a lot going on. They've had a very um, varied kind of career in regards to the type of music and metal that they make. So it's it's good to kind of like just see the trajectory and what my favourites are and what, you know, what ones didn't quite resonate as much. Again, for a more in-depth analysis of the entire Cradle of Filth, output over the last 30 years or so then of course check out my full end 70 minute discography review of cradle of filth that is in the comments not the comments in the info section or whatever there'll be a link there and you can check that out otherwise right let's just get on with it i suppose in last place then um would be um the 2012 i want to say uh, effort the manticore and other horrors easily my least favorite by a country mile, um, purely because it's just so uninspired, it's so bland. The band is like a skeleton of itself at this point. You've got um, Martha on drums, you've got Paul Allender on guitar, and Danny Filth. Um, I know uh, Martha and and, um, and Paul Allender kind of did, you know, kind of pulled together and, and really made this, uh, you know, a, a coherent record. Um, but you know, it's it's the worst Cradle of Filth album. It's not bad, as in technically proficient. You know, it's not. You won't turn it on and go, "Well, this is absolutely shit." What are these guys doing? It's just so boring. It's so cradled by numbers. It's so sterile. It does nothing for me. So it's right there at the back. Next up in fifteenth place is phonography. Um, this had a bit more charm to it than <laughs> than the Manticore. It wasn't sterile. It wasn't boring. However, it was really scaled back and I cannot for the life of me shake the idea that this was like some sort of commercial cash grab um, with all the clean singing, the lack of blast beats and stuff like that, you know, the the guest vocals from Vila Velo from him, shit like that just really didn't gel well with me. I like the extreme crazy cradle stuff, like the, the really like bizarre and dare I say meandering uh, song lengths and and you know complexity and these those insane vocals from Danny Phil. Phonography is none of that. It's it's really poppy. It's really just uh, it's just not very good. Um, it really doesn't do anything for me at all. So it's right down here at number fifteen. Just above it, but only just, is Darkly Darkly Venus of Versa, which suffers similarly to me in my eyes. Um, as the same fate as, as the Manticore and other horrors is that it's just really boring. Um, this album seems to split fans. People seem to either love this or hate this. Personally, I, I hate it. I mean, again, technically and you know, proficiency wise, the band are tight. The band are, you know, they're amazing musicians. It's just this really just doesn't really do anything for me. There's, there's, I don't really resonate with it if i listen to it as i like to with cradle of filth records i listen to the whole thing in one go from start to finish it doesn't really draw me in at any point even though there are some good moments you know there's some good sounds and you know some good lyrics or riffs or whatever but you know it, it's it's just not very good uh, i'm afraid and it's it's just really uh, <laughs> and i don't know i don't know what it is the artwork is just really bad as well and yeah it it kind of has the same what I said about Manticore stands for Darkly Darkly Venus of Versa as well, even though it's not quite as bland or stripped back and kind of boring as, as Manticore. So yeah, that's why that one's also quite low and down the list. So number 13 then. This one ain't too bad. This one ain't too bad. From this point onwards, 
the albums have more redeeming qualities to them than the three that I just mentioned. Um, so in 13th place is Crypto Rihanna. Uh, the seductress or seductive, seductiveness of Decay always get that album title wrong. Um, again, this was like the revitalized modern day renaissance cradle of filth lineup. This was the second album they did with that solid lineup that's been more or less there since I think 2014. Um, I know Lindsay Schoolcraft has left the band within the last few years, but over the last six to eight years, the album, you know, the band have had a solid lineup and this was their second album. Um, and the first album that came out kind of really kind of blew everyone away. Um, but Crypto Rihanna seemed to get good reviews. Personally, it just kind of doesn't really excite me. Again, it's better than all the records I've mentioned previously and has a lot more standout moments in isolation. But as a Cradle of Filth record, a musical journey from start to finish, listening to the entire album, I can find it, again, quite disengaging, quite boring. It's just, it's not bad. It's not bad, but it's not great either. And that's why that one sits there, number 13th place. Next up in number 12 is uh, From the Cradle to Enslave EP. I count this because it's a transitional period for the band and it's quite an important EP. Um, there's so many fucking lineups on this fucking six-track EP. Um, it's it's insane. Um, you know, so it's, it's the last we see from Stuart Anstis um, in regards to the songs Dark Blood and Fucking. I don't know if he was... Yeah, I'm guessing he played on um, From the Cradle to Enslave as well. Um, but those are the real core of this it's a two-track ep let's be honest um there's a version of there's a version of um carpathia on here which i don't really know why it's on here it's pointless but you, you do get to hear nick barker's drumming a bit clearer than it is on the album but it's still a sub subpar version you got amazing cover songs sleepless by anathema death comes ripping by the misfits um but it's kind of a mixed bank it's this low down because it's all over the place. It's a jumble of sessions. It's a jumble of lineups. No one really... <laughs> it's kind of all over the shop. But it's some, you know, four of the six tracks on you are absolutely amazing despite this. And that's why it's this low. But, you know, at this point now, everything above this is pretty good. But it's still a ranking, so I have to put them in order. So, yeah, From the Cradle to Enslave at number 12. At number 11 is Hammer of the Witches. So this is the recent lineup that I talked about, even though Lindsay is now gone. We've got Annabelle on vocals and keyboards, etc. Um, this was their like first album, and it really, really brought my interest back into Cradle of Filth after a string of kind of meh albums, you know, Manticore, Thonography, Darkly, Darkly, Venus of Versa. It, pfft, when this came out, I was all years again for Cradle of Filth. It felt like a, a revitalized, reborn band. And, and it was. It's a completely new band, more or less, you know, um, with only Danny and uh, Marthas uh, on drums surviving from the previous lineup. Um, Hammer of the Witches has some, you know, it has some amazing guitar playing. There's amazing drumming. Um, the songs just seem to hit that much harder uh, like they used to. We've got some really interesting keyboard playing going on because of uh, you know, because of Lindsay Schoolcraft, some really cool songs. Um, Deflowering the Maidenhead, Displeasure in the Goddess, you know, Blackest Magic in Practice, Right Wing of the Garden Triptych. Is that the name of the song? Just thinking off the top of my head. Brilliant songs, brilliant album, but it's low on the list because there's better albums. In number ten is the most recent album, Existence is Futile. Now this is people people kinda I think put this way up as like really, really, really good. And it is really, really good. It's like the production is incredible, the 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 riffs, the songs are savage, it's a lot harder and heavier. It really fucking takes no prisoners, which is amazing. And also um it's one of the le- less fantasy based, it's probably the most meta dare i say meta cradle of filth record because it's all about like environmental like devastation and the end of the world existence we're fucked essentially is what cradle is saying and um you know this record is brutal to kind of you know emphasize that and it's you know again after a massive break since crypto rihanna it's it's an incredible album it's a really well made really well like polished and put together metal record and it comes out number 10 because you know as i said with the last few it's just ones that are better number nine 
is Godspeed on the Devil's Thunder. I think this will be lower for a lot of people, but um, as in, low, you know, further back down the list of, of stuff that isn't as good. But I really like Godspeed on the Devil's Thunder. I think mainly because after Thunography, it gave me back what I was craving from Cradle, from Cradle of Filth, and that is like the super heavy songs, the really fast, intricate stuff, the mad concepts, like Gilda Ray concept album they did a concept album about a satanic french pedophile um so you know it's it's back there with that dark bizarre fantasy that you know this is the first album with marthas on drums and it was just fucking lightning fast and it was really a return to form in the late 2000s for me i really like godspeed on the devil's thunder and it's a journey as well as a fantastic concept album from start to finish really brutal really great amazing stuff amazing songs cannot knock it at all number eight is nymphetamine which i initially didn't like because of the more melodic direction um you know and you get that kind of downward trend if you were following along as a teenager like i was in the in the early 2000s we had damnation then you had nymphetamine then you had thornography and you could see the thawing of the sound as as the albums went along so i initially wasn't that big into nymphetamine but i did did like the songs again as an album as a journey as i like to say with the cradle of filth um you know what am i saying with, with the cradle of filth albums are always a journey from start to finish i don't really find that was the case with nymphetamine i find nymphetamine is like an album like a traditional album a collection of good songs rather than a musical journey from a to b it has some fucking great stuff like i said gilded cunt absinthe with faust is probably one of my favorite cradle of filth songs nymphetamine overdose is amazing. I really like Filthy Little Secret, even though it's actually quite, probably a quite bad song, especially from Cradle of Filth. Um, you know, Mother of Abominations, English Fire, it's just, it's just stacked. This is just stacked with really good songs. Um, and people throw some shit at Paul Allender, but, you know, this this album just showcases Paul Allender's talent as a songwriter, um, and it's, it's fan- phenomenal, fantastic. At number seven is Bittersweets to Succubi. I, lo- <laughs> I love that album title. Uh, it's kind of like a stopgap EP more than an album. Um, it's got a really kind of washed out, kind of like hollow production to it, which I touch on in, in the long video on, that I have on Cradle. Um, but I love the songs. Again, All Hope in Eclipse, Born in a Burial Gown, Suicide and under Other Comforts. Uh, Scorched Earth Erotica. These songs are fucking incredible. And chuck that uh, into a cauldron with some re recordings of, you know, Principle of Evil Mid Flesh tracks, um, like um, the title track, like The Forest. Uh, no, it's not The Forest of Swiss, was my name. What do they do? They redid The Black Goddess Rises, and they also did um, Summer Die and Fast. And, um, you know, these are really good remakes as well. And it's a great EP slash album. Production's a bit crap. That aside, I absolutely love all the songs. Danny's vocals in these sessions as well are absolutely just out of this world. The end part of Suicide and Other Comforts is just, oh my God, like what is going on with that voice? Number six, I think this is going to surprise some people. Number six, Cruelty and the Beast. Usually this tops most lists. And I completely understand why it's really hard at this at this point, right? We're in the discography, in the ranking. It's kind of hard to like decide what goes where these are all incredible albums but number six is this low and i say low like that because it's not low i mean i've talked about some amazing albums before this but cruelty and the beast is off the top spot number one number two because the production uh, and i know it got remastered or whatever that isn't particularly great either it sounds too overproduced and polished it doesn't really the keyboards on the remistressed version just sound garbage like they fix the drums uh, even though Nick Barker is apparently not still not happy with the drums, which is fine, that's his right. But they kind of stripped out all the guitar, you know, all the guts out of the guitar gone, and and the keyboards just sound terrible. Whereas on the original mix, everything sounds fantastic, but the drums sound like absolute gash, um, which is a shame because I think this is one of the greatest metal drumming performances of the last 20 or 30 years you know nicholas barker is an absolute machine and his drumming his his fills his his like stamina his speed is just incredible and cradle of filth really floundered i think when nick barker left you know how can you replace someone like nick barker um and that is you know evident 
uh, in in the troubles that followed Cruelty and the Beast. But yeah, again, Cruelty and the Beast, I could list all the songs here, every single one as an example of how amazing this album is. The, the problem is I have with Cruelty is that the production is so garbage, but the songs are amazing. And that's why it gets number six instead of like number one or number two. So at number five is Midian. Um, so the first album without Nick, first album without like Stu Anstis and uh, Damian Gregory or Lecter Smith, you know, the guys that really were part of the classic lineup. Uh, so Midian had more of a, uh, they had Paul Allender back. Paul Allender rejoined after leaving in the early 90s and he became a mainstay in the band from this point. Uh, you had Adrian Elanson from At The Gates on drums, Martin Fowle on keyboards, um, you know, and, and that was a bit of a, uh, you had um, Jan Pires, I think, still on guitar at this point. Anyway, Midian, again, the production isn't amazing. It's really like treble heavy and just like kind of fat, but not in a good way. I don't know if they were like overcompensating for the thin brittleness of Cruelty and the Beast, but I don't know. Again, Midian is stacked with just incredible songs, like these long, meandering, cold, you know, bizarre, weird, like subterranean, gothic metal songs and you know it's great i think it's based on a clive barker novel so you know of course it made sense to have um you know pinhead in there um basically what i'm saying here is is like this is um a, a brilliant example of cradle's music as a journey the whole album feels like one unique whole i would recommend listening to midian you know i wouldn't recommend just pick, picking a song i would listen to the whole thing in one go that's how i like to do it i like to follow along with the lyrics and you can really appreciate you know the 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 just craftsmanship of these songs um you know her ghost in the fog is on you it's one of the greatest cradle of filth song songs lord abortion cthulhu dawn you know i could i could go on the closing tracks torture soul asylum and tearing the veil from grace or the other way around those are just absolutely astounding pieces of work if you follow along with the lyrics put some headphones on and just really get lost it is just absolutely incredible and i i cannot recommend that enough midian you know it's number five but it's it's so good it is so good uh yeah so it feels weird again putting it at number five but there's so many good albums on this list number four damnation on a day this was the first cradle of filth album i ever heard it's the first one i ever bought um Again, a lot of people don't seem to like this. I think it'd be a lot lower on most people's lists, but I love Damnation of the Day. Like, the music is literally falling off the disc. This thing is so long, it's so epic, and it is the perfect album in my eyes of of portraying a journey. It is the perfect concept album from start to finish. The fall of Lucifer, uh, you know, from heaven to hell and everything in between and again it's it's they have a full uh, i think of the budapest film orchestra they have a full orchestra it's fully orchestrated um you know it's it's incredible the, the depth that the production is spot on um the band sound amazing danny sounds amazing his vocals are incredible um yeah one criticism things maybe some songs don't need to be as long as they are but you know, it's this is basically a seventy-minute album. It's it's serious business. It is inc- incredible, and I would I would recommend if maybe revisiting it if you didn't like it before and you are a fan of Cradle of Filth. I would genuinely suggest revisiting this album. It's it's one of my favorites. Um, it's f- it's a phenomenal album. I I cannot recommend it enough. Number three, um, Dusk and Her Embrace. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm running out of good things to say about Cradle of Filth. Dusk and Her Embrace. Uh, it had that, for me, the classic Cradle of Filth lineup, Stuart Anstis, Nicholas Barker, Jan Pires, even though I don't think he really played on this. Uh, if you listen to interviews with Stuart or, you know, guys that are around that era, I think Gain kind of came in afterwards, um, even though he's credited on the album. Uh, you had Damien Gregory as the keyboard player, and of course, Danny Filth, um, you know, and the other session musicians that they used. Um, Dusk and Her Embrace is, is, is the perfect Cradle early cradle album it's it's just incredible the atmosphere the production is a bit crap it's a bit shit but if anything in this case like a lot of early black metal stuff it lends to the atmosphere here the production really just makes it it just makes it so much better the riffs are just absolutely incredible in this the guitars feel like they're literally weeping it is amazing the keyboard work people have shat on damien gregory a bit but 
I fucking love this guy. This guy is really on point with it all. Again, Nicholas Barker, incredible drummings, drummings, <laughs> incredible drumming going on. Like the, the, you know, th- this this is just phenomenal. This is an absolute gothic masterpiece of any genre. Um, and it is you know, Funeral in Carpathia is one of the greatest songs ever made. This is one of the greatest albums ever made uh, in the gothic style and in the metal style, and it is stunning. Uh, absolutely stunning and i again it's a journey from start to finish the whole thing is an absolute pleasure to listen to um and i i just want to go listen to it right now just talking about it um makes me want to go and listen to it <laughs> at number two at number two on the list is principle of evil made flesh again i think this would be slightly lower for some people as well um realistically though even though i've got this the other way around dusk is probably the better album but i have a soft spot for principle of evil mid flesh when i heard it when i was a teenager i just wanted nothing more than to be able to make music like this i loved the rawness of it even though it's not as raw as some black metal i love the like the the raw honesty of it and i love the sound and i've realized recently or not recently but as i've grown up that it's the sound that comes from i think the studio that it was recorded in anathema's serenade sounds similar as does my dying brides um turn loose the swans uh paradise lost it is i think some of the blood divine albums the, there are countless albums recorded at the studio and it has that incredible sound and not to obviously take away from the talent of the band this is the proto cradle lineup here you got the ryan brothers in the band paul allender uh nick barker still on drums you know danny goes for a completely different style here with the vocals it's a lot more black metal even though the riffs are like totally death metal <laughs> but you know i love this this is raw this is honest this is the beginnings of an amazing time and an amazing career for this band and this album is literally like just incredible and i i i don't wish to be older i don't wish my life away but i wish i was there to see the impact that this had you know those magical beginnings and i love this i absolutely love the sound i love the songs i love the creepy uh keyboard interludes by ben ryan like they're they're, they're incredible I, I love this. I love everything about it. I love every single song on it. I love the 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 like roughness of it, the the youth and the energy you can hear. Absolutely love every single last thing about the principle of evil made flesh. But <laughs> knocking it off the top spot by a smidge at number one, of course, is Vampire. It's the only thing left. Vampire to me is the best of the best, by far the greatest thing Cradle of Filth ever did. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a six-track EP that was recorded to, you know, kill all ties with Cacophonous Records, but it's just incredible. Every song on here, uh, well, not every song, but most songs are just, you know, absolutely amazing. Granted, the opening track, Ebony Dress for Sunset, is a bit of a garbled mush. You know from the off that the band being business, Nick Barker absolutely destroying like minds with those drum speeds. Um, the second song, The Forest Whispers, my name originally appeared on Principle of Even Mid Flesh. I didn't really see a need to re-record it, but it's a bit of fun all the same. But then you've got The Queen of Winter Throned, Nocturnal Supremacy, She Mourns a Lengthening Shadow, The Rape and Ruin of Angels, four of, or you can call it a hat trick because you can drop the keyboard bit. So if you drop She Mourns a Lengthening Shadow, you've got three songs there, a hat trick some of the best metal music ever made it is absolutely bonkers like a vocal the vocals are absolutely insane the drumming is just beyond words the praise i could heap on nicholas barker on this album is just it knows no end so i won't even begin it's fucking great that's all i would say Stu anstis on guitar the first or maybe second depending on what order they were recorded in uh recording that he did with the band guy that guy is an amazing guitar player Again, Damien Gregory's keyboards are just, oh my God, incredible, especially on, you know, Queen of Winter Throne, especially towards the end. It's just like, man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. And I want to just quickly shout Robin Graves as well, like his bass is keeping everything together. Um, yeah, I- incredible. And I absolutely love Vampire. I cannot, cannot fault this, you know, well, I can fault it the first two songs a bit, eh, but like the rest make up for it perfectly. So that's it. That's my Cradle of Filth album ranking again it ended up being 25 minutes long in its own right but um you know it's still easier than watching a fucking 70 minute video if you're not that interested in the discography of the band so yeah give me a like subscribe all that shit because i'm going to be doing more of these in the future um so thank you for watching let me know what your cradle of filth 
uh, records are, you know, what your favorites ones are, which ones you hate, or just talk to me about, you know, anything you want in the comments about, you know, Cradle of Filth, about black metal, anything like that. Let's get a dialogue going. Cheers for watching. This has been Lines and Wax. I'll catch you in the next one. All the best.